Okay, so this is this is NAV 2015. Um, there are role centres that uh, can be assigned to users for their different roles, and the different roles mean this home screen changes, and our navigation options change. So as a, a shipping and receiving user, there are things that are important to me on a daily basis or on an hourly basis that I need to check um, uh, from NAV um, and be able to be alerted to. So one of the great things that um, NAV's implemented is uh, these activity queues. So I can see um, queues that are relevant to me. So I can see the released sales orders for today. I can see there are 16. I can drill down on that and see a list of, <coughs> sorry, see a list of the 16 orders that usually, the 16 orders that um, I've got released today. And it's just taking a little bit of time. Yep, thinking about it. So it's filtered my, it's filtered my list. Um, if I go back to my home using the back arrows, just like a, like a browser, um, I can see the other cues again. So the other thing that we can do is set, um, we can set uh, favourable and unfavourable targets for these cues. So these inventory picks have been set up to say if I've got a certain number of picks, um, that's a favourable count. Now this is an unfavourable count, so it's showing in red. So I'd say three picks for the day, that's not really very much going through my warehouse. So we need to get onto the sales department or the customer service department and say what's holding up these sales orders. We need to get some, um, some staff doing some work in the warehouse. So hurry up and release the sales orders so we can create picks for them. Um, so these cues are, um, are editable to get these colours in to be able to say what's favourable, what's unfavourable. So that at a glance we can see what the business is doing in relation to my role. Now the other things that I have on my home screen are my customers. So if I've got a list of customers that I'm wanting to watch, so Progressive Home Furnishings, it's one of the ones that I'm wanting to watch. I can see what their balance is. Um, I can set up their phone number and simply click on it and it'll open up um, a Link or Skype um, to be able to call them. I can have charts, so there's trailing sales orders. I can see what, what sales orders we've got in our system and when we've had them from. Um, so I've got uh, uh, my colours here telling me what my chart means. So I've got open orders, I've got my pending prepayment orders um, and I've got my released orders. So I can see you know, what I've got and how long they've been there for. Um, if I double click, so I'm in this quarter, if I double click on my released section, once it works it out, it will give me a list of my filtered sales orders that um, that apply to that section. Sorry, I clicked too many times. Come on. I'm sorry, I don't know what this is doing. Let's go slowly. No, nope, let's not go slowly. Okay. Here we go. I just need to be patient. Um, so this is my my list of filtered uh, of filtered sales orders um, that relate to this 48 over here that's mentioned in my chart. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other features on the on the front are my notifications. So down here I can set up notifications for myself or for other users um, to action something. So I've got in my list um, I've got a a message to call Paul to check on the arrival date of this purchase order um, and I've got one to call the customer for Spotsmeyer's furnishings to see if their their rental for this sales order that's set up is still valid. Now I can, we'll see it a little bit later, I can set up notes to ask somebody else to do something in relation to it or it can be a reminder for me to do something. So I can all, always see these when I click on my home screen on the role centre. <coughs> Sorry. So what we'll do now is create a new sales order. Um, so if I go to the sales orders option over here and I simply click on new, 
It will bring up a sales order window that's blank so that I can fill it in. There we go. Now, um, the number, just like uh, you've got now, will populate automatically. I have fields that have red asterisks in them and this is used throughout NAV now to say that it's a mandatory field. I can't create a sales order without a customer number. Um, so it's a mandatory field. So there are these mandatory fields we see on items when you're creating a new item or a new vendor or a new customer as well. So I'm going to sell um, something to my customer 30,000. And the search functionality is really nice, um, in NAV 2015 as well. So if I don't know the number or if I don't know the name, I've got the ability to sort on a different column and I can say, look, I can't remember the customer number, but I'm sure it's John something. And then I can see it's John Haddock Insurance. So I can double click on that and it'll select that customer. Um, I have, just like we do now in standard nav, we have the check to say that they're overdue balance. Um, do I want to continue? I check with my um, accounts receivable department and they said, yep, sure, no problems, you can sell on something. And I say yes and carry on. So you'll see the sales order looks quite different. We don't have the tabs up the top anymore. Um, we have what's called fast tabs. Uh, and these are trying to give you as much information on the screen that's relevant um, without, uh, without hiding things that are really important. So if I, if I have a look, I can see down here on what would have been the invoicing tab up the top, I have this invoicing fast tab. And down the bottom, sorry, across here on the right, I have promoted values. So if I hover over 30 days, I can see that the payment terms code for that customer is 30 days. And therefore, my due date is the 25th of the 6th. So these things um, are they're fields that I can expand and see more detail relating to invoicing. But these particular fields are promoted so that I can see them even when the fast tab is collapsed. Yep. So we find this really handy in being able to give you information at a glance that's important so that you don't have to click on it to find out what, what um, this customer has. Now, we still have the, the header section like we used to have, but we now have this line section here. Um, and very similar to before, well, not similar, exactly the same, we choose the type, it's an item. Again, I have these mandatory fields with the asterisks next to them. I have to put in an item number. So I'm going to sell them um, an item. No, sorry. I've got to put my num lock off. Sorry. And I'm going to sell them 1964W, the Innsbruck storage unit. I tab through just like I would now, and the details will populate. My location code is going to be blue. My blue location is set up to um, to create picks um, for my warehouse to action. I'll just see. Oh, it's just me. That was you. Right. Awesome, no problems. Okay, and we're going to sell them one of these Innsbruck storage units. Now, what we also have are these fact boxes. So NAV will show me information relating to this customer. So how many um, documents I've got relating for this customer and about this specific line item. So my item information, my availability of what I've got in stock will display on the right hand side. So I can see really quickly in the blue warehouse whether or not I've got enough. You know, they've said they want 15 and I can have a quick look and say, yep, awesome, I can give you 15. Or perhaps they've asked for 15 but I know I've got something else coming that, that they want the stock, so I'm only going to give them one today. Um, we have the total fields here, which um, you used to have to press F9 to see the statistics for. Um, so those total fields show by default, so we can see what the total amount is really quickly, and they're happy with that. So I tell them it's going to be $904.19, and they say no problems. 
So just like before, um, we release the document so that it can be actioned by the next process. So in this version, we have gained the ribbon with tabs and actions, and we have um, got rid of the buttons that used to be down the bottom right with all the different functions and the links to the other things. So you'll find everything that you used to have up in this ribbon here. So we've got actions, um, which will show us different things that we can do, things like um, creating the pick or posting, um, emailing conf order confirmations and things like that. And Navigate will usually go into um, the things like or related pick lines and things like that. So I'm going to create a pick for this, uh, except it hasn't released it. So I need to say release. Awesome. So my status has changed to release. And now I can say create pick. I'm going to create an inventory pick for this sales order and I say OK. So it's created a pick for me, which is awesome. And now I can tell, well, now the warehouse can go and pick my order. So if I go to my tablet client, so this is an awesome now because I have timed out a bit. It just needs refreshing. So this is the tablet client. So um, you can walk around with an iPad or any kind of tablet, any kind of surface. It's touch screen, which is brilliant. Um, and what it does is simplifies the, the, the web um, web experience so that you don't need as much information as you've got when you're on your on your PC. Um, and we've just got the information we need. So I can see now, as my warehouse user, I can see that I've got four picks ready today. So if I click on this, these are my four picks that I need to action. They're for sales orders. I can see the customer number. I'm going to pick this last one that I just created from the Windows client. It brings up my pick. So I know what item number it is. If I've got bins in the warehouse, the bin code will show here, just like it would on a normal inventory pick. And I can usually, oh, sorry, I've got to edit. Sorry. So up here, I click on the little pen. There's edit. I click on my quantity to handle and I say one. It's all done. And when I'm ready to post, I can click on my ellipsis buttons and say post. If I want to print the invoice as well, I can say post and print. Um, but I just want to post today. Now, just like just like standard nav, I get the um, option to either just ship or ship an invoice. I'm going to ship an invoice today, and I have these happy little ticks and crosses to action something. And it'll go through, and it'll post the inventory pick, and it'll post my sales order as well. So I can see it's gone from there. I can now go and have a look at my next inventory pick and process that if I'd like to. Now going back into nav, and I go to my role center, um, I can see here my inventory picks have been reduced to, to four now, um, and I, sorry, three, sorry, from, from mm -hmm. four to three. And I can go to my posted documents, and I can have a look at my posted sales, let's go with posted sales shipments. Now, because my role centre is um, shipping and receiving, I don't really need to see invoices. But I'm, what I'm more interested in, because I'm an inventory controller, that kind of um, that kind of role, I'm more interested in in the inventory um, transactions. Yeah. So I can scroll all the way to the bottom usually, and I can have a look at my last one. No, it won't be that one. It'll be this one. And I can see my Innsbruck storage unit that's gone out for them. Um, so the other thing that I want to do is create a transfer order. I need to transfer some stock from one warehouse to another. So just like now, um, I create a new transfer order. I'm going to transfer it from the blue warehouse to the red warehouse. Um, my in-transit location uh, populates automatically. I put in my item number. I'm going to transfer 1968. Uh, I'm going to transfer the S rather than the W, and I'm going to send out five. 
Um, so again, I simply release and I can create my pick here and I say OK, which is awesome. And I go back to my, my, um, my tablet app and I simply click on refresh to have a look at my picks and I see that I've now got my outbound transfer pick, which I can double click on, process, edit it, is modify like my Oh, sorry. Is it like an alerting mechanism so they don't have to refresh, they get notified, you have a new pick or? Uh, no, but I think the nature of using the tablet client, you are constantly clicking from one screen to another. So if you went back to your inventory pick screen, you, it would refresh when you were when you clicked on that anyway. Yeah, cool. Time's out as well, so you, you, yeah, know, yeah. As you saw earlier. Uh, so I'm ready to go. I'm happy with the five. I'm going to post that. Now, just like um, in the current nav, that basically ships my, um, sorry, this guy was refreshing that too. That ships my quantity of five, and now the, when, when the red warehouse get it, they can receive the stock in, just like you would now. Um, in terms of, in terms of what that's done to my inventory, if I go and have a look at my items, um, so if I go to items, I've got that in my navigation for my role center. This is my item list now. And I've got a bit of functionality that I didn't have before, and you would have seen this in the What's New um, demonstration, is I've got some additional filtering and sorting options. So I can effectively sort just by clicking in the in the header row, um, I can right click and say I want to sort by ascending. I can sort on any field here. Um, so I could go by anything with a production bomb number and go by descending. And I can see those there. Um, I can sort I, I can sort on anything I can see effectively. I can go back and I can sort descending or ascending on the item number. Now I've also got my filter pane, um, which gives me uh, much more visibility in what I'm filtering on than the older versions of NAV. So I can add a filter to say, I'm going to filter on the blocked field, which is not shown. So I go to all and I click on blocked and I say where blocked is no. Filter my list. I want to add a filter to say, um, let's go by filtering on the item number. Sorry, I can do that from here. And I'm, I want to see everything from 1,000 through to 2,000. So filtering um, values are exactly the same. Okay, I did two. I just did one. So it'll show me everything from 1,000 to 2,000. Is that then export exportable? Absolutely. I can select here, I can right click and I can say copy rows and paste. Um, so I can simply say copy rows. I can find Excel, which is harder to do here than I thought it would be, um, and paste it into Excel and it takes everything that I can see. Sure. Um, I can modify my columns. I can right click and say choose columns. And it'll give me a list of all my columns that are available. So at the moment, these are my columns that are showing. I can say, look, I don't really care about the net weight. I'm going to remove that. Um, I do care about the blocked and the assembly policy. And I can pretty much go through and show anything that was on the item card. And I say, OK. Now, when I say this, it's going to refresh my screen so I can see those fields now. Yeah. So if I scroll across to the right, I can see that it's added the blocked and the assembly policy. So is that just for that session or for that user? Just for my user. Um, and for all sessions, like, sorry, for, if I log back in, it'll be like this. Just for you, for you yours will stay the same. So there's a lot of um, what NAV calls um, customization. We call it configuration, just to be clear, because yeah. we call customization when we go and actually change code in the background. Yeah. Um, but what is this? Is this filtered? Um, my filtering of the number and whether it's blocked, I can save this view. So I can save the view as, 
um, not blocked and items one to a thousand. So I can say NB 1000 to 2000. Let's go 1000 rather than 100. And I can add it to my home activity group and I say OK. So it's asking me, it says I need to restart nav. I say yes. Hopefully it's going to be quite fast. I need to restart nav. So it means I need to close nav and it'll open it again. And now I can see in my list of items, I get this additional right, view. Yep. And I click on that. Yep. And it'll show me filtered by. If I drop down on my filter pane, it shows yep. me here. So for you know customer lists, vendor lists, item lists, even sales order lists, things that you're watching for a particular value, um, you can save these views so that you're not constantly filtering every time you go to a list. So it's just another one of those things that Nav's tried to make simple and quick so that you've got fewer clicks for those kind of things. Yeah. Um, I've got my fact boxes here again like I did on the sales order. Um, I can see uh, things like what my costs are, what the costing method is, what my current profit percentage is. That's looking pretty nice. Um, uh, what my um, reorder quantity is, all of those kind of information, that, all of that kind of information. Um, I can view my inventory as a chart, which um, I used to think was a little bit naff, but it's actually quite cool depending on the measures you choose. So at the moment I'm looking at my items as a list. I can show it as a chart. And I can see things like what's my inventory level as compared to my cogs. Um, now at the moment it's filtering on these values up here. If I take these off, it'll reset my chart. So it's showing me um, by... Uh, by inventory category code, item category code. We might change that to be inventory posting group. So that's a bit more important. Interesting. Still nothing. So I've got my finished goods, my raw materials, and my resale material, my resale goods. So I can see that my my cogs and my finished goods are kind of going through the roof in comparison to to what I've got in stock. So we need to have a look at something there. Um, but we can we can toggle between that show as list and show as chart just if that's something that's that gives me great um, kind of visibility on what my inventory is doing at the moment yeah. uh, there are a couple of other things on things like the item card if I go at that 1964 S I go to my item card for that Tokyo desk chair I have some extra um, fields that I didn't have before so whether or not I want my stock out warning. So when I create a sales order, I don't have enough stock for it. Do I want it to pop up and say, can't fulfill that? I can actually set that on the item. Um, and again, prevent negative inventory. So you might have some inventory items that you want to allow to go into negative, um, and you set that on the actual item card rather than across the board, which is what um, you've probably currently got. Um, and then there are two other things that I want to show. One is the inventory availability, sorry, item availability. So your item availability, at the moment you can go by variant or location. We can go to event um, or we can have a look at a timeline for what's, what's going to happen for this item. Now that's not going to help me, really. Okay. I'll have a look at that later. If we can have a look at it by period. Go by month. Someone's been playing in our demo system. Yeah, that's not helpful. Okay, so just like now we've got this, you know, item availability. We have some other options. When you guys have um, bombs, we can have a look at those. So if I have a look at an item that's got a, that is part of a bomb. Um, so my loudspeaker, if I go and have a look at my inventory availability over here, go by bomb level, I should be able to see what components are available when, once it's figured it out. So I can see I've got these are my components for my LS100, my loudspeaker. These are all the components that go in it. This is how much of each item goes in it. <coughs> I 
apologies. And this is the quantity available. So I can see really quickly at a glance, I can't make this item right now. Um, and I need to go and do something about purchasing these items to get them into stock so that I can then make some more loudspeakers. Um, and then the last one is the uh, inventory valuation report. Um, this is one that I had to run over the weekend especially um, to make sure that they're stock reconciled from old NAV to new NAV. Um, and new NAV gives a much nicer um, experience for this, this report, which you probably know takes a really long time to run. Um, so if I filter my items by, um, let's go with, uh, I don't really want to show everything. Let's go that 1,000 through to 2,000. I'll put my ending data today. Um, and I say preview. So NAV should go through, calculate what my inventory valuation is for the range of items. Um, and what I will be able to do is drill down on the transactions for some of these items to see how that cost was calculated. So for my bicycle, I can drill down on this 1,000 and see what makes up this 7,000, um, sorry, maybe not 7,000, um, see what makes up that cost specification. So much quicker report and, and you would find that a lot of the reports in, in 2015 are much quicker to run um, and you've got some extra features like this. I can now save this at, to Excel or a PDF or a Word and open it up in there to do some more analysis if I really want to. Um, and that is pretty much what I wanted to show you. So we've seen... We've seen the new role centre, we've seen the elements that make that up to try and give you as much information at a glance of what's, what's happening with the business. Um, we've had a quick look at the tablet client um, to see how we can use that. Um, and we've been able to see some of the processes that, um, that have been converted for this new version. Does the tablet client have the notifications thing as well? Uh, it doesn't by default. Um, it might be a setup thing that you can add to the, the home screen for personalization. Um, Just for example, a salesperson wants to send a note to the person who's going to pick it, for example. So. Yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that. That's not a problem. Yeah. Cool. And the reporting. So are you able to create your own reports or hook something else on top? Uh, in terms of hooking on top, um, there's a, a new um, report builder that is included called Jet Reports, um, and that we've seen used in a really powerful way um, at places like Starlight Children's Foundation and um, some of our other clients that have picked up the, the newer versions. Um, so you can create uh, pivot tables and everything like that from data in NAV. Which which is um, really easy to do. Um, the other thing that you can do in this version is for things like your sales invoices or purchase orders, um, you can edit those in Word um, in the format that you want um, and use that rather than the standard version which NAV might, might produce for you. Um, so that's another really strong thing that kind of eliminates the need for you to pay us more money, which, you know, is sad, um, <laughs> but, um, but gives you guys a bit more autonomy in terms of um, customising report uh, documents that would go out to um, external. Yeah, well, NAV 2015 provides increased efficiency and productivity for different users within the system. Uh, we showed new fields and functions, customizability or, or configuration options, I should say. Searching enhancements, uh, creating time-saving views for customers and or items or anywhere in NAV, uh, summarizing key information, charting within the application, and we didn't show too many reporting improvements, but that um, it's certainly available um, from in a number of ways from within the application and on top of the application. 
So uh, finally, yeah, if um, we have a report usage tool, I don't know if I've uh, mentioned that before, but if we inst we can install this um, a fob in NAV and it'll track whether which reports are being run, so yep. that um, we can weed out the ones that you won't need to upgrade. So that yeah, that was that was something we used for for this implementation over the weekend. That was essential because they were able to isolate you know 30% of their reports that were customized that they didn't need that nobody used mm. um, so they were, it, it would definitely cut down that the cost for them and and was able we were able to say look you don't need this so therefore we don't need to upgrade it which they were happy with